Hello folks, welcome back to the channel, thank you very much for joining me once again. You are always most welcome. Well, today, something new, sort of. <laughs> tigers, <laughs> now then. <laughs> Normandy Tigers, and some of you will remember, having just seen it there, my own uh, Tiger One, uh, the Michael Wittmann Villas Bocage Tiger One. Um, now, a couple of things about this we ought to talk about. So, first of all, Michael Wittmann was the also known as the Black Baron, was the un undisputed sort of king, or certainly if you believe the propaganda, was the king of the sort of Tiger Commanders, Tiger Aces. Uh, he made his reputation on the Eastern Front uh, fighting the, uh, the Russians uh, in sort of 1941, 42, and 43. Then, of course, in 44. Uh, when the Normandy campaign kicked off, he was then summoned across to Normandy. And there were other um, famous tank commanders as well, like uh, Otto Carius and uh, Kurt Sauber, and people like that. Um, and Kurt Sauber, the last chap, uh, it's spelled S-O-W-A surname, but I think it's pronounced Sauber. Or Sauber. Um, he is important in this story. I'll come, I'll come back to that in a moment, why he's important. Now, um, the reason I wanted to do a talk about this today, um, I'm not. It's a very contentious subject I'm going to talk about today because there just isn't a great deal of evidence either way um, about the subject. And the, the nature of the controversy is that when Wittmann, who was a pretty committed Nazi, let's just get it out on the table, he was, this was not um, a bit of a blue-eyed boy, but only for the wrong reasons in many ways. And he'd... Uh, they say he destroyed, I think, 180, 200 tanks plus. I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, there was a lot of exaggeration. You got a lot of this on the Nazi side, particularly. You got it. In, you got it with the Luftwaffe. A lot of gross exaggeration. But he was certainly a very cunning, competent, and very courageous, fearless tank commander. And he used these tigers when he when he got into the tigers. He used these tigers to great effect. Um, and especially this one, of course. The famous incident was on the 13th of June, 1944, week after the Normandy invasion, when he came up against the, um, the British troops who were just uh, on the preliminary out, uh, stages of taking the village of well, the town of villers uh south of Caen. <coughs> oh, south of Bayeux, really. Um, and the, the story goes, and this is where it gets a bit confusing and contentious for those of you that don't know. The, the contention is about, the confusion is about the actual tank he used on the day. So what he basically did was, he, I think he knocked out 22 vehicles in the space of about an hour. Um, less than that, actually. I think he knocked out 14 in the space of about five minutes. Absolutely unbelievable, really. Uh, it didn't help that the Brits had all decided to... Uh, stop on the main road into town, queued up nose to tail with virtually no space between the vehicles uh, to brew some tea, that's <laughs> how so the story goes and then Wittmann crashed in, in amongst them from the, the opposite field having seen this and he, he took out the first and the last vehicles, a firefly I think at the front and a load of, uh, um, they had a Churchill at the back I think and then a load of these uh, American personnel carriers and brain gun carries and all sorts, but they couldn't move them out because they were, they were like in a jam in effect. They parked them in such a way. This lesson never seems to get learned, does it? You've got it happening in Ukraine. Even the, even the Ukrainians are guilty of this. Sometimes I watch these videos from Ukraine and with great admiration for the bravery of the Ukrainians, but sometimes they still... There is this habit, I think, when you're in... It's easy for me to say I've never been in battle, you know. But there's this habit where I think they feel it's like strength in numbers and they get far too close to each other with the vehicles. And that's why I'm at Villas Bocage anyway. So Wittmann took out this, basically this entire column and then charged into the town, taking out one tank after another um, in a most dramatic, uh, uh, probably single, the single most dramatic act of tank commander bravery, you might say. He didn't have his usual crew either, he didn't have Bobby Vol, who was his gunner, a very famous gunner from the Eastern Front. He actually, um, he wasn't in his normal tank, and this is what really the core of the story, and the reason I'm telling the story, I'll get to in a minute, is that we're going to review the new, brand new uh, Special Edition Rifle Model 5101, which is the Villas Bocage late production Tiger. And I'm, I'm telling you this story, A, because you may not know it, some of you, but Basically, um, in, the, in the end, this tank does actually get knocked out. They, they took a hit and it's, 
it was hit, I think, by a firefly. Um, because the British did manage to uh, regroup slightly despite the initial terrible shock and the mauling that they took and a couple of fireflies and a Cromwell appeared and one of these fireflies actually took out the tracks on the tiger um, and in the end he had to flee the village mid, mid, early mid-afternoon I think after lunchtime because uh, it started about nine o'clock this encounter and by, by late lunchtime they'd had to run off because they had to abandon the tank and the tank was 222. Now, this is the controversy. What was the tank's number? And people argue about this back and forth. Now, I wasn't there on the day, and I'm not, I can't tell you 100% with 100% certainty because I wasn't there. Uh, and there is great debate about which tank it was because Wittmann turned up with his crew in Normandy in tank 231. And then the night before this, this encounter, this engagement, it had, I think, it had a problem with its gearbox. It's pictures of it being towed, so it broke down basically. Uh, engine, engine and or gearbox trouble. And when he was alerted by an observer about this British um, gathering outside the town at Villas Bocage, Vitman, uh, I'll see if you mean while I'm talking, so you can have a look at the, uh, the model from it's a Tamiya. Um, We'll get into that one in a bit more detail in a second. But basically, Vittman just, just had said, get, I've got to have a tiger, give me a tiger! And he was so dis obsessed with taking out, and he, as, as he duly did, attacking immediately the British at the first opportunity to try and rout them. Because this was um, an instruction from Monty that the British had surged south quite effectively, actually, at this point. Uh, which, unfortunately, of course, Vittman soon stopped. And he jumped in the first tank that was available. Now, this was actually Kurt Sauer's tank, or Sauer. It was his tank, uh, and he let Vittman take it. Um, I think he waited for another one. But the debate is, was it 222? Was it 212? Um, 231, I say, we know was knocked out. But there's a, there's a whole debate about this, and uh, many modellers who model the Villas Bocage, I, I waited, because I, I did... I did months and months of research until I was happy enough that it was in fact 222 two, two. Uh, and most accounts now seem to agree it probably was 222 two, two. and I say probably because all the photographs when the tank was knocked out and seen in the main street all the photographs are in black and white and you just can't make out what the numbers were I think there's a bit of burning on the side uh, a bit of a bit of a fire I think because uh, I think some of the ammo cooked off and so you just couldn't tell and you said was it 212 but most <clears throat> most research I've read seems to conclude that it was actually 222. And that's why I model mine on 222. Um, and there we go. Bittman went on, of course, to, he was famous for all sorts. He had a tank 205, I mentioned 212. Now, Dragon have brought out as well, have also brought out Vitman's Normandy Tiger uh, with different options. But they've missed out 222 because they didn't. They obviously didn't realise that it wasn't actually his tank that he used on that day. It was Kurt Sauer's tank. Uh, and they've missed out. They haven't actually included 222 as one of the options, which I think is a... Tacom have made a bit of a mistake there. So Tacom have kind of dropped the ball. They've put every version, including 007, which of course ultimately is the tank that... Uh, and again, there's, there's also controversy and uncertainty around what I'm going to say about the end for Vitman. Uh, which was in uh, was in August, early August, where he and um, was it Panzer Meyer uh, were having a, an orders group meeting, and and they saw uh, an American marker aircraft dropping flares, and knew that the American bombers were coming, so they they had to scoot and they went north um, near a village. Um, and I've forgotten the name of the village now, it's a treble barrel name. I can picture it actually, I can see the photographs I've seen. I've done a lot of research, but I just can't remember. Uh, anyway, basically, th uh, four of these tigers rolled out and then came under fire from both the Canadians on the west side of the road, uh, behind a wall, and, uh, and I think it was the, um, the Nottingham Fusiliers, was it? Uh, my, sorry, my, my, my memory's letting me down. I did do the research, but it's, it's gone. Anyway, Joe Eakins was the famous gunner in this firefly that was hidden in the woods opposite and he is alleged to have been the one that fired the, the fatal shot that hit Vittman's tank. He took out two others and then he took out Vittman's 007 and it instantly, uh, it was an instant hit with a 17 pounder gun and it, it detonated the, um, the fuel I think and it set off the explosives all the ammunition went and it blew the turret sky high and, and it killed everybody in the tank instantly, including Vittman. And Vittman today is buried, he was actually buried locally near the site of this, uh, this, in this big field, 
just next to the main highway. Um, and uh, he was initially buried there, but then they re—I think he was, uh, I think maybe in the seventies—they reinterred him at the Le Combe German Military Cemetery, which is uh, on the way to Carentan, between Carentan and sort of uh, sort of west of uh, south of, if you like, Omaha Beach, between Omaha Beach and Utah Beach, basically. Anyway. There we go. So, uh, and again, there's arguments. I said there's controversy because the Canadians um, have claimed that they knocked out Vitman's tag. And of course, it's one of these things where it's like the Red Baron. Everybody wants to be the one that claims to have knocked out the Red Baron in this case. The Black Baron, Michael Vitman. Anyway, it was probably a good thing that he was he was taken out because he was a, a very committed Nazi. He was decorated by Hitler and he had the... Um, he had the Iron Cross with cross swords and oak leaves. He had, Pretty much the highest commendation he can have. A very, very skilled guy, though. So, I'm talking about it in the context. I've got Vitman here. I'm going to talk very quickly about this, and then we're going to do a review on the new model, which I think is what you're all wanting. So, <clears throat> here we go. This is the Tamiya mid-production. Now, the very sharp-eyed amongst you, several people have seen this in the past and have congratulated me on being quite a nice model. <laughs> what nobody has spotted, and which I always keep to myself until now, I'll explain why, is the wheels. It's actually a mid-production tiger, which is actually wrong. If you look at the wheels, they've got the rubber, and they've got the rubber um, threads around the wheels, the black rubber. Can you see that? Yeah, so actually that's, that's um, a mid-production, and it was in fact a late production. That That's the only inaccuracy on it. And uh, I've done my Vitman figure quite well, I thought, but it's not, strictly speaking, quite the right tank. I don't really care, I've got to be honest, because I'm very pleased with my model. But it is the Tamiya mid-production, so it's not Technically, it's not quite right. So, I'm going to move that on one side and we're going to have a look at the new model. So, if you'll bear with me, I don't know if I've got room to put it somewhere safe over here. I think that might be a good idea, actually. Putting it somewhere where I know it's not going to get damaged, which is probably over there, to be honest. So, I'm going to move that across. You see the, the sag it's got from the very heavy um, fuel tracks, which are extremely heavy. Just drop one of his crew off has just fell off. We'll put it there, I think that'll be okay. Put him back on the barrel. But it's actually Vitman that sits on the barrel in the other one, as you'll see in a minute. So we'll pop that over there out of the way. Now then, this is what we're really here to see. So this is the new Michael Vitman Villas Bocage Tiger 222. It's a late production Tiger as you can see. This is from Ryfield Model, their kit 5101. And it says, includes a highly detailed resin kit of German Panzer Ace, high precision one piece movable tracks with a Zimmerit, uh, and it's actually Michael Wittmann, the figure of course, based on the famous photographs. I'll zoom in on that, because that, that's quite pertinent. Uh, go full zoom on this, here we go, there he is. Uh, the famous shots of Wittmann sitting on the barrel. The Black Baron, so we get a resin figure. So, zoom you back slightly, on the side, we have got a picture of the tiger, and then we've got the Vitman figure, and then we've got some, yeah, I think there might be a little tiny bit of photo etch as well, and you get all the tracks now, but be, be wary, I know some of you will be groaning and dreading this because, only because, <laughs> Ryfield's tracks are notorious for being, uh, for being a bit hard work, but I have good news because they've gone for a slightly different approach with one piece tracks. So they've gone for a Lincoln length type style. Finally, instead of doing every single track individually, you can see they've got they've done that around the sprockets, the front and rear drive sprocket and the eye of the sprocket. But uh, for the rest, you've got like Lincoln length in one piece, one piece track. So that is really good. They've really responded, I think, there to what the the modelers want. And then here's your Michael Vittman sitting on his barrel. It also has the Zimmerit finish on it, and there we go. So, I think we should get into this and have a look at it. It's a brand new kit, it's just arrived with me in the last, last 24 hours. And, yeah, um, it's interesting though that <coughs> I did some research looking at if any other modelers had picked up on this thing with the Tacom set. And it isn't, Tacoms is a nice kit. They've also done the big, the big box where you get... Was it Otto Carius? I think it was the figure of Otto Carius in their set with three tigers. And and then there's this option with the Normandy Wittmann version, but they haven't included 222, which is a big mistake. And it's a common mistake with manufacturers that they um, 
because there is this confusion about the identity of the tank concerned, Duffin gets missed and it's wrong, of course. I should stress that um, Tommy R's, I had to make up those decals, they didn't, it didn't come like that from the manufacturer. Um, I had to actually create my own, my own uh, decal set, so there we go. So, put that over there, nice instruction book here. There's going to be a lot of plastic in this, I'm sure, a lot, a lot of plastic. There we go. I think we'll have these seen the bags, which is always good. There is a lot of sprue, I've got to say, on and on and on. on. Got our Michael Vittman figure, we'll get to that in a second. Such a lot of it. I mean, a lot of it will be repetitive, of course. Yeah, interestingly, now they see there, I've got it right. Look at it in more detail in a second, but they've got the decals, they've got Vittman's two, tank, uh, two tanks from Normandy at that time, at the time of Villa's Bocage. It's almost as though they're trying to cover the bases because, I'll show you this, just do this quickly. It's almost as though, going back to what I was saying, that they're really determined to make sure that they cover all <laughs> all opinions, just in case you think it was 231, but it couldn't have been, because there's a photograph of it broken down. Uh, and there's lots of uh, accounts from the day. I think that uh, Kurt Sauer gave an account and said it was definitely broken down. So 212 and 222 are the two that, that really get debated, but most think it is 222. But it, uh, it's just based on the photograph, because people couldn't make out the middle number. So that's why they've included all three options, <laughs> just to cover it. So you can make your own mind up. But I warn you now, if you start doing research on this subject, it's a rabbit hole you'll never emerge from. Because I got to the point where I, think, well, I, I thought, well, there's so many accounts that seem to indicate it's 222. But there is no conclusive proof either way, so you just have to, to go with it, really. So that is the, um, well, we've got the standard, the more standard, 221. Uh, 221 was, that was the other tank, wasn't it? I'm trying to remember whose tank that was. I mean, it's a, it's a very deep story, it's very deep water. We won't worry about it too much, but we'll get too bogged down. I think we've said our piece on that. I think it, it was 222, that's good enough for me. Anyway, I made it 222 on my model, so it has to remain as that, doesn't it? I'm not backing down. <laughs> right, so, I think we'll start with the instructions, and I'll flick through them fairly rapidly, because it is a tiger, and I'm sure most of us are fairly familiar with them, to be honest. So here we go. doesn't give you a typical rye field Chinese tradition. doesn't give you any history. So, you know, it's a good job I've told you the story, because otherwise you wouldn't know any of it, because there's nothing here. We've got our um, sprue map. Uh, and of course there are a lot of sprues, so we've got, goes up to sprue Z, oh lord, really? Yeah. Oh, that's a bit strange though, isn't it? One, two, three, four, it's not that many, not as many as they're indicated. But there's a lot of parts, very part heavy. And as I say, I know people don't often like these because, there's, because of the track problem, but that's kind of sorted here, I think. So we've got um, a bathtub style hull. Uh, we've got reinforced, a bit of reinforced plates and armor plating going on on top of there as well. And then we have got our sort of torsion bar running gear going in here, and then the road wheels, and this, and this is the important part. I mentioned that, I just see like, as I mentioned, um, I sort of cheated there. I've got that very nice tiger, I'm very happy with it, but it isn't really quite right because it should have had the steel wheels. By the time we got to early mid 1944, the Germans were really struggling for rubber. Because they've been the American bombing raids, um, especially attacking um, some of their rubber plants, etc., and they were running short of oil, and they, they decided that they could get by uh, on the Tiger as a steel wheel. I think they have like a, they have like a coating, like a high grip coating on the steel, but it wasn't this thick rubber, almost like a tire on it anymore, because they just couldn't afford that. That was taking massive resources. And so you can already see that the effects of the war are taking a hold because I'm pretty sure that in certain conditions that wasn't as optimal performance for gripping the tracks for the wheel as it had been with the Mark Mark One early and mid production. Anyway, so that, so they, they are different. As I said, there's no rubber wheel around the outside, no rubber track. We've got our drive sprockets going in here at the front, and then <coughs> I've got the idler. Whoops. Zoom in properly. Drive sprocket there at the front. I'm having trouble with my zoom again. I think my control's getting a bit, a bit worn out. 
Uh, and there we go, so there's your idler at the back, and then you've got all the road wheels going on, over interleaving them and overlapping them as you see. Because it does have quite a lot of wheels. How many does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there's 12 per side, plus, so that's 24 plus the, the four idler and sprocket wheels. It's quite a lot, isn't it? Um, then we have, <coughs> I think the might be some is there any resin in here? We've got just the way they're showing it now. They're just showing it. it makes it look like resin there. Uh, we've got our exhaust. You're building up the exhaust, but in typical Ryefield fashion, almost like mini art. They have instead of having you know one piece. Why have one piece when you know eleven will do? <laughs> uh, and then you've got here. Obviously, it's your the jack for the tank. That all goes at the back, complete with the armor plating around the exhaust where it comes out of the engine. Um, there's like an initial armor plate housing and then there's like an outer sort of bulletproof housing as well so it's got double protection really and then you've got the side plates coming on complete with your tow cables going on there as well um, and your the whole of that back bulkhead with the exhaust on goes at the rear you've got your front glasses area here with the machine gun and the driver's viewing port that's going in there drop that down on the front plus the top of the hole, uh, the lower hole front. Now we get into the tracks. Now this is the bit that people sometimes dread. I know that my friend Jason from Model Kit still, he, hate, he hates Raphael for this reason because I think he built a tiger. I think it was a tiger and he said it was a nightmare doing all this track work. So finally they've got the message from us and they've gone for a link and length um, where there's, uh, obviously they've got like an inner section. They've still made it into two pieces. So they've got the basic track in one piece and then they've got the, the inner gripper section that goes between the, the wheel grooves. And then you have to create only a small amount. I think it's 17 pieces. It's uh, yeah, 17 pieces, uh, 17 links basically, just for the, the bit that shapes around the sprocket drive wheels. Then you've got a couple of holes to drill here and you've got your grills and meshes going in as well. So I presume we've got some, maybe that's in the photo etch, yes it is, a bit of photo etch meshes. And then we've got the top of the whole assembly here, complete with the engine access hatch. And you've got your tools going on here as well, all those mesh grates going on at the back over the engine. Uh, and then you've got your uh, mechanism for opening the hatches, uh, the hinge, looks quite detailed. <clears throat> and then we have got some of the ancillary parts on top of the hull, so you've got all your other tow cables, you've got, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. you've got barrel cleaning rods here, and you've got your um, spade, is it a spade? Yeah, it's a spade. Yeah, it's a spade. Uh, just a general sort of, it's a full on sort of snow spade. And mud as well. And again, we've got plenty, of, <laughs> plenty of um, sorry, just zoom you in. Plenty of bits, parts, multiple parts for the barrel. What, you know, why have a barrel in one piece when you can have it in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? <laughs> Complete with the muzzle and the muzzle brake. Flash eliminator at the end, uh, and then you've got your mantlet, the back of the mantlet for the mounting for the gun here. 88mm gun of course, when you've got your 88mm breech, again lots of parts, quite, quite part heavy this kit. Building your breech complete with your uh, empty shell catcher and then you're going to build the two sides of the, uh, the turret, the sort of hull of the turret so to speak around it. Whoops! Okay we've got rev a revision here. So. Workable tracks, 24 pieces for each side. Workable tracks. Revised version for the track links. Not quite sure what that's saying to us there. Uh, 24 pieces per side. I think it's giving you the option actually so you can have full workable tracks instead of having the link and length. So that's the option you've got there. Interesting, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll have a closer look at that. Back to the turret and you can see that we've got um, all of the cupolas and the, the viewing ports going in around the outside with all the little periscopes. And then we've got the MG34 machine gun going on the top. 
and then we've got the uh, we've got a pistol port at the side. This is the main access escape hatch, escape hatch at the back, and then you've got your mounting ring here. And then you've got your stowage boxes on the back of your turret here, and you've got your <laughs> spare track parts, which is, seems to be many many parts of the links that go on the back, complete with the mounting brackets. Shows the position of them, and then finally shows your completed turret coming in. That's going to go be mounted onto the main chassis here, and you've got your lights uh, not the main lights. You said it has one headlight down in the middle, and that is it. And then we have, interestingly, we have got. Interestingly, it's showing the other options that are included in the. So this is from the original. Um, kit if you like. It's got Tiger 132 in the Cologne area, September 44, in this rather darker scheme. And then you've got 221 in Normandy. This is the one, uh, this is the one that uh, was not, that was not Wittmann's tank, but that was one of his squad obviously. That might have been the tank that Kurt Sauer ended up in I think. 213 as well in France and then uh, one, two, four in Lithuania. Now none of the, none of those artworks includes the Wittmann one, so it's a little bit a little bit strange they've done that, if I'm honest. Unless there's any, I'm just going to check if there's anything else. So they haven't. It's a little bit annoying, this, isn't it? This is what I always complain about. I know, but here we go. It's another guessing game. There's no history about Wittmann here. So if, those of you that haven't done the research I've done, or are new to the hobby, or don't know the history of the Normandy campaign. There's nothing to tell you anything about Wittmann here whatsoever. Absolutely zero. And it doesn't explain. You're thinking, well, why is it 222 on the cover? And yet it's got all these other numbers on the inside. It's quite confusing. Okay? This is where the Chinese manufacturers need to step it up a little bit. Because that is utterly confusing to a lot of people. 222, you know, there's people going to think, oh no, well, it was 007. Or I, th I was told Wittmann's tank was this, that, or the other. Here we've got the original, um, you know, it hasn't even given you a colour call out for the 222 decal. It's a bit strange, isn't it? Have I, have I missed something? I'm going to double check that I've not made a mistake, because that is, that's almost kinetic silly, isn't it, actually? No, it's not there, there's nothing there. Nothing, nothing about Vitman, nothing about 222. It just says Battle of Villas Bacares, that's all it says. Doesn't tell you what, what happened, doesn't mention Vitman anywhere. In fact, it doesn't actually mention Wittmann by name, even though it clearly is Wittmann because it's based on the photograph. It just says German Panzer Ace. So they've not even mentioned his name, which is kind of strange. Anyway, the important thing is we've got the right decals for it. And we've got the standard decals, which you won't want to be using if you're trying to do Wittmann, so forget those. And I'm not going to get too bogged down with it. <clears throat> anyway, let's have a look at the plastic. So there's, there's a lesson there for Ryefield. It's, all they've really done is they've thrown in a, a resin figure, they haven't changed the instructions at all from the standard kit, and they've not added any information or description about Villas Bocage, what happened or anything else. So if you haven't got someone like me telling you about it, or you, you know, you're going to have to go and watch a YouTube documentary or something, then you, you're in the dark, aren't you? So it's not great. I'm sorry. They need to do better than this. ICM would have given you chapter and verse, wouldn't they? You know? And so would Airfix, and so would Tamiar, etc, etc. Even I, even Zokimura. Right, anyway, um, we have got some very nice looking, they really are nice, actually, these grills in Photo Etch. That's really a cut above, I think, for Photo Etch grills. Those look absolutely super. I'm going to take them out of the bag because they are so good. I think they... This is what we'll get now. I've had a bit of a moan, but generally speaking, I always find that Ryefield... The plastic is usually, and the actual content of the box, the kit, is excellent. They just need to, like the others do, they need to step it up a bit with the actual information. I mean, to, to not have the colour call out for Wittmann's tank, the only thing you've got to go on is the picture of the box art, really. Strange, isn't it? Very odd. Anyway, these are beautiful. Look at those. I mean, could they be any better, really? Obviously, they're protected by some... Uh, so you look at them from the back and it's just a simple grid, but they're actually kind of they're actually kind of etched and they've got shape to them. Uh, so they look different on the front, on the top. The top surface, they look absolutely amazing. You see what I mean? It's just a simple hatching at the back. So they're actually kind of 
Uh, they have contour to them, is what I'm trying to say. Very, very beautiful. Quite like that. So that's... Uh, they're going to lose a point, or half a point, I'm sorry, whatever the outcome of this is, they're going to lose at least half a point for not including any, you know, colour call out or artwork or even mention of Vitman or Villas Bukais. That's just crackers. It's just like they put the standard kit in there, thrown in the uh, extra decals and the uh, and the resin, resin figure and that's it. And it's like up to you. Go and do your own research, you know. Anyway, let's have a look at this uh, figure, speaking of figures. This is Michael Vittman, even if they don't tell you that it is. As you can see by the position he sits in, it's that famous, uh, from a famous photo where he's sitting on the, on the barrel. Now, I'll do it without the arms, just because of clarity. Let's see what you think of this. So this is a nice resin figure for us. I'm going to have to come in close here because... It's quite small, obviously, relatively speaking. I'll move this over there. Now then. Can we see that? That is beautiful. He's got the iron cross with oak leaves and cross swords. And I say he sits astride the barrel. That's why he's in that position. And he's got what looks like, I think it's a Luger in a holster at the side. And the back, smart, black. Because uh, he was SS, wasn't he? Not, not a very nice character, I don't suspect, but uh, there we go. But they've, they've um, certainly done a great job with the re uh, reproduction of the, the outfit, you know, even the, the posture and the, uh, the lapels. So we've got the. Uh, if you can make it out, the Iron Cross, just on his collar. Very, very nice, that. Real, a really beautiful, well-observed figure in resin. And then we've got a couple of arms, and of course, um, I don't know if I can just... Uh, and I can't, because they've actually got like a bit of sprue on. I'll, I'll just have to show you the arm separately. So, that arm goes down sort of like like so because he's got it, he had it on top of the tank didn't he one arm flat and the other arm on the other side also goes down flat so I'll, I'll just show you the arm separately you can see there it's very nicely moulded same on the other side but they've done that very well haven't they Excellent. Very nice. Nothing wrong with that at all. Not at all. So, <clears throat> let's talk about tracks. <laughs> it makes people like me terrified because it sort of keeps you awake at night thinking about it, doesn't it? Put Mr. Herr Wittmann, the Black Baron, back in his, uh, back in his bag. Now, we have got some Lincoln Length. So look at that first. Oh, put it in the bag as well. That's quite cool. I like the packaging from Ryfield. I always like the packaging. I always like the plastic. It's just the presentation. They seem to let themselves down on a little bit. Here we go. And here. So this is the link and Length tracks. Now, one area that they do not let themselves down on and that they excel at, in my opinion, is the moulding. And look at this. Look at the detail here. And then obviously this is the, as I mentioned, this is the the inner part that runs between uh, between the actual grooves in the road wheels. See that? That's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at the precision here. Look at the complete, you know, some kits would just be filled in with flash. If this was made by Ravel, it would be utterly tragic. But look at that. Look at the cleanness and the, the sharpness of the actual, the moulding. Absolutely stellar. That's just incredible. See it? Beautiful. I like that. That's got to be the nicest looking, 
moulded tracks I think I've ever seen. Got to be. Look at it on the other side. So obviously this section here is where we can see the ejector pin marks. That's where this, this insert goes. That's well done. That's beautiful. Really. So that I'm impressed by. I don't think there's anything not to like there. So that's the link and length section. Then we have the more traditional, slightly scary Ryefield. <laughs> the normal Ryefield individual links that you've got to cut. Every one of these has got to be cut out. That's not, that's not complete. That's on a sprue. So you can see that there's a lot of work to do here. You have to cut every single one of these off, separate them. And this is obviously going to be going around the inside, that's the outside, going around the sprocket and the, uh, the drive sprocket and the idler sprocket wheels. But again, the moulding quality is very, very high standard. The cleanness of their moulds is as good as anything you'll ever see, really. Those are very nice indeed. And we've got, how many of those have we got? One, two, three, four, quite a lot. <laughs> So I think they've given you the option with this kit where you can have it link, link and length and just have them going around those very contoured areas of the track. But I'm pretty sure there's enough there to do the entire tracks in the normal way and have working tracks. Which I'm tempted to do, but it's such a repetitive job, isn't it, doing, doing uh, the tracks. And of course they have pins, which we'll find actually. There we are. Yeah, so these are the pins that go and hold those track parts links together. And this is where people get a real headache in this thing. <laughs> so, these are the individual pins and they actually have a system where there's a little, here there's a little uh, jig, which is how you actually uh, mount them to insert the pins. So the jig's on the end of the sprue. There are two of them actually available. Two of these jigs on two of the sprues. So you plonk your little links in there and then at the end you push in these pins uh, and then you cut them off once you push them in. So you push them in, in in sets of four and then you cut them off and just clean up any any uh, little bit of clean up at the end but say a little bit you look at the number of them there's a quite a lot of clean up for every pin you're gonna to have to just rub it rub the end of every one of those um, and these are the interlinking uh, parts of the uh, the interleaving uh, the link interleaves so to speak that go between the road wheels so there's a lot of work it's going to be very very repetitive you know it goes on and on and on and on and that is one of two sprues that is identical. So you can see there's a lot of pins. Oh, look at that. That's a lot of work. So just be aware. Uh, I can understand that, you know, people, I mentioned Jason, he complained about this, and it's fair comment as well. But uh, they are listening, though, aren't they? They have actually, if only they'd listen about the instruction, yeah? Because they have listened to the criticism there, and that's a change from them. Because previously, you've just had this. And it's been painful and incredibly time consuming, you know, to, to, to create those tracks. Because there's no real shortcut. This is why I went for the, the frill tracks on my tiger just over my shoulder there. Uh, the frill metal tracks, not only did they give a, a beautiful weight and presence to the model, um, but they were relatively straightforward. But even then you had to faff around with putting some metal staples, basically, metal pins in the end. It wasn't that straightforward. Um, is that the end of the tracks? It is. So let's have a look at, logical to look at the wheels next, I think. Um, road wheels and sprockets, there we go. I'll look at the sort of sexy, exciting stuff at the end. <laughs> but again, you know, what was I saying about quality, of the actual mould quality, the tooling quality here is exceptional you know so check this out here's your drive sprocket and it isn't that nice that is they're just perfection I mean these are kind of almost beyond Tamiya standard aren't they really they're 
they're up there with the Meng and Zokimoras of this world in terms of mould. Mould finish, mould quality. That's the back side of the wheels. Back side of the wheels, sorry, there. That's the front side. All the bolts. Some superb detail there. There's your idler sprocket wheels. And the main drive sprockets. Absolutely stunning. And then there's obviously two lots of that um, sprue duplicated twice. I'll just pop that back in the bag. Oops. There you go. Yes. <coughs> I'm going to go back these. It's because they have these, um, <laughs> these resealable bags. They, they're great in some respects, but they do catch when you're trying to put things back in them. Almost every time, yeah. That's that one. And then we have all the running gear and the torsion bars and the other sprockets. So let's have a look at those. And again, it's a duplicated sprue, so there's two of. As I say, a lot of repetition. So this is all the torsion bars, and again, very, very nice moulding. Look at this. So here we've got the idler sprocket wheels. And you've also got here, uh, it's got some nice casting effect in it. This is the uh, protection around the exhaust, reinforcement uh, housing around the exhaust at the back. And you've got two uh, drive sprocket wheels. And you've got the, the, the drive from the transmission coming out there. And then we've got, did I see some flash then? There's just a hint of flash on this sprue, if I'm honest. Can move on as well? Yeah, they've both got it. There's just a little hint of flash. I mean, these are a quarter of a point. It's just, I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but it's just appearing around these parts. There's a slight halo of flash just appearing slightly, which I don't think I've ever seen on Ryfield before. So that's maybe a sign that it's, yeah, you can see it on the end of the sprue as well there, can't you? I think it's just a sign that the, the tool's perhaps getting a little bit, I'm going to say worn. It's probably not worn. It probably just needs cleaning, to be honest. Just needs uh, any residue removed from it. You can just pick up on tiny traces. In fairness, it's not so evident on the smaller parts. You might just spot the odd tiny echo of it, or like a little halo, but not much. It's more on the bigger parts over here, these torsion bars. Um, so just be careful with that, because that's got a little bit of just a little bit of a, a hint of it. And then over here, we've got things like the lights. Or well, the light, I should say. I mean, headlight at the front. Um, and do, 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 some very, very small parts here. Look at this. Tiny. I'm not even going to name what those are because I don't know. If you've got some towing eyes there, the hooks for towing. Go at the front of the chassis. Um, then we have got, over here we've got some clear parts, and this really is things like, it's just the periscope visors I think, so it shouldn't take too long to, to see. Yeah, we've got the main cupola periscope viewing ports there. And then these are all uh, various periscopes around the cupola on the outside for both of the hatches, the cupolas, and then you've got the, the headlight as well there. That's that. Well, they're, they're okay, but there's not much to them, is there? I mean, it, it's very hard to detect what the quality of those is when they're such tiny parts, really, because even if they had flaws in them, they'd have to be extremely bad for them to be picked up by the eye. Uh, unlike something like a canopy like we had recently with the old... Uh, the yeah, FX Spitfire 24 scale and certainly some visible flaws in that one. Um, so that's that for those two sprues. Put that back in there. Okay. Now then, now we get to the sort of more interesting parts of the tank really. So we're getting up to the, uh, the sort of business end of the tank. Tiger, 
Jackson gets a tiger complex. A tiger complex. All your men have got a tiger complex. That's what Montgomery said, isn't it, in Normandy? Damn it. Every man thinks he's facing a bloody tiger. And half of them are Panzer Fours. <laughs> Panzer Threes in some cases. No, they're not all bloody tigers. You've got a tiger complex. Yes, and it, and it was. It was um, because of the shape of the German tanks. They, from a distance, they do all kind of look, with the exception of the Panther, really. They do kind of look all oh, stuck. A lot of the tanks, though, they do look quite similar from a distance, I'm sure, especially in poor light. And everybody thought that, you know, that they were going to be mulled by tigers. There weren't that many in Normandy. I think there was something like 120 in total, which isn't that great, actually. It's not that many at all. I think only one in four tanks was a tiger. Uh, if that, one in five, I think. Anyway, let's have a look at this. So this is the um, the business end at the turret. So we've got a lot of the parts of the turret here, including the stowage boxes. Um, parts of the stowage box, we've got the NG34 machine gun. Get that a bit closer for you, there you go. MG34. Uh, we've got things like the barrel cleaning rods, we've got the tools that are going on the outside, like the spade, axe, hatchet, more spades, quite a lot of spades, aren't there? More hatchets, you've got um, like a, basically a lump hammer there, isn't it? And then you've got wire cutters, quite a lot of tools, barrel cleaning rods again, I think those are. Uh, or is that the aerials? Do you know, I think those are actually aerials, aren't they? They've actually included aerials. That's interesting. Then we've got some uh, fuel jerry cans, some fuel cans. Traditional German jerry cans. And I don't know if you can make out the writing on them. They've got some really fine there. And what does it say? I'm just going to have to use more magnifiers for this, if you just excuse me for one second. Because it's actually quite hard to read, and it says... Kraftstoff 20, uh, Wehrmacht, it says Wehrmacht at the bottom, wow that's very tiny writing. So actually as you read it, it says Kraftstoff 20, then it says something I can't quite pronounce, Fu flammable, flammable in German, German which is Führerhaftsrich, then it says it's 20 litres and at the bottom it says Wehrmacht. Can we get that in? Is that possible? Can you make it out? <laughs> That's impressive. They've done some really, again, the moulding quality, so fine, you know. They do it so well, Ryfield do, this kind of thing. And over here we've even got the uh, the bipod at the bottom right there, the bipod for the MG34. And there's the pistol grip and the stock. And then you've got parts of your jack for the back of the tank. It gets stowed at the back. Nice sprue that actually, very nice sprue. That's quite impressive. Oh, I love the way they've got that fine writing, that's quite eye challenging I can tell you. Those of us that haven't got 20 times zoom, uh, trust me you'll be needing your optimizers to read that. I needed my optimizers and glasses. At least these bags are not very noisy ones like we get on uh, some of the ICM kits. We've got these very, very ultra crackly bags. <laughs> right, let's have a look at this. So we've got the actual hull here, bathtub style. Uh, can I get into this? Yes. Here we go. Absolutely sublime this is, look at this. Typical rye field, uh, really, really good. Um, check this out. So the moulding detail, the crispness and the cleanness of it are absolutely perfect, aren't they? Got the underneath there with completely the escape hatch. Is that the escape hatch or is that an access? No, it's an access panel for the engine, isn't it? Sorry. In fact, they don't have an escape hatch underneath, do they? Gosh. Hence the one at the back of the turret, then. So, hmm. Not sure I like the idea of that from a tanker's point of view. 
So we've got that, and then we've got some um, some rope, basically. It's not that's not for the cable, is it? That's for I think it's it for some towing rope. I think that's the idea. Uh, that's just going to be stowed, I think, just for effect, really. Because we saw the tow cables; they were in plastic, weren't they? By the way, sorry about the wind in the background. You can hear my garage door is flexing around. We've got some really high winds at the moment. The weather's not that brilliant at all. Certainly not warm anymore. But sort of autumn has come early in the UK, I'm afraid. The turret. Let's have a look at this. Okay. <clears throat> There's not much to it on a Tiger turret, is there, in terms of contour or finish, really. They're fairly straightforward in that respect, because they're very smooth. But this has got the Zimmerit. It's got Zimmerit, hasn't it? With Zimmerit. Hang on a second, is there two versions of that? There's no Zimmerit there, is there? That's odd. I'm questioning this because the finish is smooth, it's not got Zimmerit on there. So where is the Zimmerit that's been promised? Okay, so we've got to you've got Zimmerit on the That's very odd. We've got Zimmerit on the front of the glasses, there's an option, there's two different options. But there's no Zimmerit there, and it shows it in the photograph as having Zimmerit on it, so that's got me a little bit perplexed. So there are multiple versions of these. There are several different versions in here, so you have to be careful to use the right one. So you want the Zimmerit front, which is that one. So there's actually some parts here that we're not going to use. So that's the Zimmerit there, but there's nothing... Sorry, if I just show you this, I'm sort of talking off camera here. Can you see that just ahead of the two, where the 222 is, that's a Zimmerit covered side on the turret. But that doesn't appear to be replicated in the kit. Oh yes it does, okay, so it's the same issue. So they've actually got, okay, so instead of having it in two pieces like the show there, it's here. It's a little bit confusing, isn't it, on the same sprue as well. So it's actually here, so I beg your pardon. It's because I was looking at one part, I thought it'd be separate, but they've actually put it on the same sprue. So there's your Zimmerit turret, absolutely fine, no problem. That's nice actually, isn't it? And trust me, that's a lot quicker and easier than daubing it on with blooming putty or... I took the other, the other route, didn't I, with mine. Which worked out quite well in terms of the way the model looks. But I bought the Tamiar self-adhesive stick-on Zimmerit, which actually worked really well. I just have grave misgivings about long-term, when the adhesive starts to fail, like a few years. So how old is it now? It's about six years, I think it's six years old. I think when we get to 10 years plus, we'll see how the, if this zimmer it stays on, if it starts to peel off. Very likely, I'm afraid. Very likely indeed. Right, okay, so we've got to, we've got to the bottom of that. We've solved that problem. So it looks to me like we've got two different sets that are... It's, it's certainly covered anyway. You get what you need in the kit. You do get what you need. That's not a problem. The thing you don't get that you need is the instructions and the data about Michael Whitman and what happened. Of that, there is nothing, nothing at all. Right. There. Now then, I'll just try and get, because there's, there's a lot of replication here and a lot of parts that you're not actually going to use. Now I, I got this at a very good price, um, I think retail, you can pick it up at a good price, it's been out for a month or so, but, a couple of months I think now. But I think we can pick it up for about the 35 to 40 pound mark, which is, I think is quite good, to be honest. I think that's a good price indeed for a rye field. I mean, we've got a top of the range Tiger 1 here. Now look at this. This is the Zimmerit. This is what you really wanted to see. Now here's the Zimmerit that's correct for this uh, Vitman Tiger. And of course, they, they did drop the Zimmerit later, because again, that's something else that was slowing the production down in Germany. And costing a lot of time and money. But look at the way that they've done it here, isn't that beautiful? And again on the, got the rear, the rear section there, all the zimmerated areas. Very, very nicely done. Here's the front, the protect the armour plate at the uh, 
so it's that way, isn't it? The armor plated uh, shield at the front of the tank, again, fully zimmerated. The glasses on the turret, again, full zimmerit. And the, the sort of front, uh, that way, isn't it? The, uh, the glasses at the front where the machine gunner and the driver are. Absolutely brilliant. That's beautifully done. Really has a nice taste to it as well. Once that's, you know, once that's painted up and a little bit of weathering and that'll really pop. Uh, and then there's another little section there. You've even got it there on the hatch at the top. Zimmer it on the hatch. And on that little section, which I think is, uh, I think that's on the rear. Of course, another reason that the Germans dropped the Zimmerit, quite apart from the economics of it and the time factor, which in truth was probably the biggest reason they dropped it. But the fact that the, the, the Allies weren't using these limpet, magnetic limpet mines on their tanks anyway. They were more using bazookas, to be honest, than trying to hit them at the back. But the trouble is, for infantry to get close enough to put a mine on, you know. We've all seen Saving Private Ryan when they try and do that. And the results were, yeah, a, a graphic example of what happens, I think. Very unpleasant. Right, then we've got... We can uh, cut this short by avoiding quite a lot of parts we've just seen that were not correct. Well, so the parts we have seen, just seen, are correct. Quite a lot of these in the hand are not correct because this is the non zimmerit version. However, that said, so we've got two, we've got two uh, tops to the. What's the difference there then? That's really confusing because I can't. I'll just. I'll just so just bear in mind when you get this kit, you need to be very wary and check check the instructions about which ones you are and are not going to use. Because here we've got all sorts. We've got glasses, different uh, glasses on the turret for the gun. Mantlet, I should say. So I keep saying glasses. Mantlet for the turret, which is, you know, this is not the Zimmerit version. So this isn't really right for this particular iteration for Normandy. So you wouldn't use any of those three. And then you've got, and I'm a little bit confused now about which one is actually correct, but we'll look at it anyway. One of them must be, um, you can look at the, uh, look at the gear, whoops, look at the teeth here. Can you see the teeth on the, uh, the turret ring? That's nice, isn't it? See that? There's teeth. That's really good. And you've got your hatches. Obviously here you've got your, got your stowage bin. The back of the turret. Um, we've got here the the gun muzzle, muzzle brake, flash eliminator, and then that's the end of the actual muzzle itself. And the end of the flash eliminator. So that's very nice. So you know, I think you use some parts of that, and not others. So it's a little bit confusing. help me. <laughs> the adhesive suddenly grabs on itself and then before you know it you've got, you've got a Chinese puzzle that you've got to unravel, literally. <laughs> okay. Right, what's that one? This is going to be a jack-in-a-box kit, I'm never going to get it back in, you can tell. It's one of those. Uh, now this I'm going to ignore because this we have already seen elsewhere, it says, just check, double checking. So many that are seem to be replicated. I keep getting out more Thorics and more. Well, that one we've definitely seen elsewhere, so we're going to ignore that one. But we'll be using that version. <laughs> um, and then we could, we're looking for the gun barrel, which is where. Pum, 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 pum. We've lost the barrel. Where is it then? Come, ah, it comes in different sections. It's here, okay. It's just hard to spot because it's not on one piece like they normally are. <laughs> yeah. That should come. Rattle, rattle. What can we do? Right, so your gun barrel is in several sections here, so I'll just zoom you in. And your barrel is in fact here. And again, another, another different version of the muzzle brake. 
uh, which I, again because several different versions have been going into this uh, into the mix for this kit. Uh, there is a hint of flash again, but not on the parts this time. In fairness, it's just on the on the sprue. Can you see it there? <laughs> Hints of flash appearing. Bit of filling. Oh, there's the towing eyes for the cables for the tow cables. Um, we've got bits of exhaust here. Tops of the exhaust. Another little hatchet there. Here's, here's your barrel, which is the, the part that goes into the actual mantlet, the base of the barrel, so to speak. And you've got the second section, then you've got the third section here. Um, there's no metal barrel option in this kit, which is a bit, a bit disappointing. I thought they could have put a metal barrel in, but anyway. That was not offered. So, And then you've got your various bits of mud guards. And you've got the protectors there for the exhaust at the back, with the big bolts on it. Um, quite a nice sprue in fairness, that's a really nice sprue. Uh, you've got some more sprocket wheels here. There. Yeah, a lot of very fine detail in fairness. Very nicely done. So the, the, this uh, flash bit's not on the parts, it's just it's just sitting there on the uh, on the sprue itself, to be quite honest. Let's pop that back in there. Super. Then we've got the top of the actual hull. It's quite important, so we need to see that because it's a big flat area on the Tiger, isn't it? This is obviously why they were worried about mines, I suppose. It's a tank that's easy to jump on top of. Uh, you're not going to slide off it or anything like that. I'm going to come out of it. Thanks, sir. Almost too good, the adhesive is. <laughs> Limpet like. Right, here we go. Zoom you in. There we go. Here's our main top of the hull. Complete with all the, uh, the engine grills. As you can see, and then there's the main engine grill access uh, panel in the middle, and you've got your rear. I uh, say so you wouldn't use actually use the Zimmer at one or or that. Neither of these two you're going to use for the Dittman version. We've got the the various very nice actually the trunking here. Look at the trunking, Look at the profiling on that. The way it's um, it's like a concertinaed corrugated trunking, uh, and then we've got uh, parts of the exhaust system. Coming out of the engine there, and we've got our wire cutters. Uh, there's, there's a lot of extras in this kit. There's a lot of parts, and there's little stowage boxes. Can you see those? Little stowage boxes. Those are nice. Complete with little padlocks on them and everything. Wow, like a wood effect. That's very nice. Let's see if there's a bit more. There we go. That's really well done actually, those are excellent. You've got your machine gunner's uh, glasses armour protection there when the machine gun pops out. And you've got some uh, barrel cleaning rods here. Yeah, it's very nice, nothing wrong with that one. Got another spade over here, there's lots of spades and tools in the kit, there's tons of it. You'll have lots of bits left over. For a diorama with this kit, to be quite honest, which is probably quite good. Then we have now this is where we've got the um, again. There's a bit of replication here, but you are going to think you are going to use some of the parts. That so makes it slightly awkward. We can't ignore them. We're not going to need that one, are we? Where are we? Yeah, there's a sprue over here that's just basically got the couplers. I'm not going to open this bag. It's just got the couplers on it only. There we are. And the tow cable and all the other parts I think are actually replications of what we've already seen. So we'll skip that one. Well have a look at this one though. It says in the frame of this. <coughs> So uh, you've got the side um, the sort of side skirts that protect over the top of the tracks. You've got the the ultimate outer armour plate for the exhausts. You've got your grills, cooling grills for the engine. 
and you've got the uh, transmission exit here uh, from the side of the, the main bathtub hull and then you've got a couple of these sides which again you won't use because you're going to use the Zimmerit version there so some of these parts you're not going to use but most of them probably are and then we've got this wonderful tow cables those are really nicely done yeah that's very nice actually a bit closer yeah those are very impressive and another couple of drive sprockets Gosh, there's so many of them, I can't believe it actually. <laughs> right, let's see if I can get this back into its bed. This is the biggest challenge of all, isn't it? Returning these parts to the, to the bag they belong into. Yeah. Way to do it is this way, isn't it? Good blow. <laughs> and finally, last screw. God, I didn't think this is going to be a very big review. I thought this would be a half an hour, 35 minute video. No. <laughs> and little did I know how many screws are going to be and just how many parts they've included and replications of parts, you know. It's kind of, um, I mean, I'm glad it was at a good price because if this was £60, then I'd be a little bit less happy because there's so many parts that you, do, you feel that you're buying and paying for and you're not actually going to use. Now, here we've got, finally, some really, really nice parts. We've got the floor here of the actual turret. Look at this. I thought, this, this is very nice. Look at the hatching and the... Uh, you know, this is the turret floor. Look at that. And then we've got the mountain ring here, the actual turret mountain ring, or mount ring I should say. That's nice. And then over here we've got uh, some of the parts where the, uh, the front body and the transmission comes out. Uh, and then we've got the uh, breech for the 88mm gun. And then we've got some just amazing small parts. Look at this. Uh, can you see that here we've got MP40 machine gun smizers that are in like a, like a mounting inside here. Isn't that nice? Those are cool. Two lots of those. And, and again, parts of the breach of the 88mm here. And parts of the... Uh, uh, the recoil absorption system there, shockers for the 88mm. And then we've got a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of small parts, as we say. Silla Black would say. <laughs> Bless her. <clears throat> Jerry cans. This time with no writing on them, this time. Just plain. And then we've got all these tiny trim control wheels for moving the turret for moving the gun, traversing the gun, elevating and traversing and just just incredible small parts. You've got drinks like like uh, little drinks bottles here. Oops, here. Sorry. They're like a gourd aren't they? Like a water gourd. And then you've got all oh, these incredibly tiny parts. So many, and I've no idea what some of them are, to be quite honest. Obviously those are the handles for the jerry cans there. But some beautifully detailed moulding, very fine, exquisitely crafted mould. The tooling for this must have been incredible. Absolutely stunning. Look at that. A lot of parts, a lot of parts, but you know, I suppose you get, you could argue that's quite a good value for money. Um, yeah, so there we have it. There we have it. My goodness. <clears throat> it's like War and Peace, isn't it? It's like a Tiger version of War and Peace in plastic. Absolutely incredible, really. Straight in that one. See, some are easy to put in, others aren't. It's strange, isn't it? 
All right then. Well, I've got a box here. I'm probably not going to get back together because it'll probably take me an hour to figure out how on earth to do that. So we'll remove those. We won't let that bog us down too much. So, what do we think of it then? Hmm, right, well, I have to say two things. Two negatives, first of all. Get that out of the way. Um, I do feel that the instructions are woefully lacking, to be fair. It's not going to work. It's just not going to have any of it. Ah, right. Anyway, I'm going to put the box top on. Hope for the best. Right, first of all, lovely artwork, but that, there it ends in terms of the presentation quality because they haven't, it just doesn't make sense to me. They haven't explained the Villas Bacalas thing. They haven't, they haven't mentioned Whitman, my name, Whitman. Um, just says Panzer Ace, you know. So you're going to really lose out something here. People are going to buy this and not fully appreciate what they're buying. Um, so it takes away some of the value of it, really. You've got no colour call-out for this, for this 222 Tiger that Vitman used on the day, 13th of June 1944, to such devastating effect against the British Army. And the Canadians, I think, were involved, weren't they? But it, it, it sells itself short, really. I don't understand why it doesn't include the Vitman. And, you know, it says Villas Bocage. Oh, right, OK. And then you open it, there's nothing to tell you. No mention of Villas Bocage apart from on the title. Nothing explained, doesn't even include the, in the colour call-outs, that's a negative. And then there was a little bit of flash, wasn't it, <coughs> on the running gear. Excuse me, on the running gear parts, which I haven't really seen with Ryfield before. So I'm going to take half a point off for the flash, no sorry, for the, uh, the because that the flash was only on one sprue really. It's only affected one, one like, a set of parts and they're, they're not the most seen anyway. I'm taking half a point off for this lack of colour call out or explanation. You know, nobody understands why there's multiple sets of decals because it's not mentioned in the instructions or the colour call out. It's just stupid. Yeah? That makes no sense whatsoever. So I'm taking half a point off for that. I'm going to take a quarter of a point off for the, the one flashy sprue. Apart from that, it's fantastic. I do like this, this option where you've got the link and length or the working track option. Uh, movable tracks uh, or length and length one piece tracks and they appear to be subject to confirmation they do appear to be giving you the option of actually having movable tracks fully movable or just have link and length in the middle sections which is much better less labor intensive and less work so so I'm going to give it 9.25 unusual figure for me but 9.25 out of 10 it could have been a 9 but I think that would be a bit harsh I think it's a little bit better than a 9 but, come on Ryfield, you're doing such a nice job with making these kits. Just put more effort into your presentation, because that's woeful. Uh, and just doesn't make sense. To anybody who doesn't, hasn't done the research, it tells you nothing. It doesn't explain anything. It's just battling what, what's the Battle of villas Bacage? We don't know. We're not told the darn thing. Anyway, there we go. So 9.25 out of 10. Um, I say it's, it's not a bad buy. And if you know your history, that's those issues I've moaned about there. And probably not going to be a problem, but again, it's just limiting its, its scope. I think it's limiting its sales potential when it's been so so mean with the information and so vague about what it's what it's all about. That isn't really acceptable. I think that's a, a particularly bad example of a really perfect. That should have been a ten out of ten that kit, and I thought it would be a ten out of ten when I bought it. If I'm honest, I thought it's going to be. All right, we can argue about that one sprue that's got a little bit of flash on it. Quarter of a point off for that. But it should certainly have been a nine and a half out of ten, and they've wrecked it by doing that. They've been very silly, so there we go. Do you agree? What do you think? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate that you've stuck with me all this time. I didn't expect this kit was going to be as involved as it was, as big as it was in terms of number of pieces. Does it actually, again, it probably won't bother telling us how many pieces there are, because they tend not to do that either. Well, it's got to have 400 pieces plus, hasn't it? Easy. Ooh, and the rest. <laughs> Especially if you include all the parts. At the end, when you build the kit, you'll have sprue after sprue with probably about 150 parts you're not going to use. Which, again, is a little bit silly. They, they should sort of tailor it better than that, I think.
So it's a, a, a sort of a genius, but a flawed genius, this one. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hope you'll give me a like, give me a 10 out of 10 as well, because I deserve 10, surely, please. Uh, give us a like, it does help the channel. Uh, you should subscribe if you enjoyed what you saw, found it interesting and useful. And don't forget, if you have subscribed, to ding the notification bell and make sure that you've selected all, not, uh, not the option that uh, personalised. Don't go for that, it sounds great, it doesn't personalise anything. It means YouTube start deciding which videos to include and, and it often gets it wrong in my experience. So forget personalised, just ding all. If you like my content, ding notifications all. Ding. There you go. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, hope you'll... Uh, tune in next time. We've got some more interesting things coming from ICM very soon. In the meantime, please stay well, stay safe, look after yourselves. Thanks for all your time. Until next time, thanks a lot and bye for now.